If I told you to close your eyes and picture a Ford Mustang, it's very likely you'll see a two-door sports car with a very large V8, making a lot of noise, likely doing an overly ambitious burnout out of a parking lot. However, this newest addition to the Ford Mustang family doesn't fall into that category. This is the all-new 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E, and it's an all-electric vehicle looking to take on the best from Tesla. So in today's video, we're going to take the 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E for a drive and see what it has to offer. The Mach-E is what you might call an expected surprise. With EVs clearly winning the future over their internal combustion engine power counterparts, you would expect a company like Ford to get serious about building an EV in this quickly expanding and highly competitive market. However, it might come as a surprise that they would use the iconic Mustang name, which is associated with vehicles that are quite antithetical to everything EVs stand for as the nameplate for their first serious all-electric crossover. But if you think about it a bit, perhaps it does make sense. Because the Mustang name is so familiar, it'll help bring attention to a vehicle Ford needs to be very successful, and regardless of what you think about the Mustang, it is one of the most successful vehicles in Ford's history. In the hopes that that history repeats itself, why not use the Mustang badge for a vehicle that will likely define the company's future? The Mach-E comes in four different trim levels. The Select trim has a starting price of just under $43,000, it has up to 230 miles of range and a max 0 to 60 time of 5.2 seconds. The California Route 1 has the best range with a max of 305 miles. The 0 to 60 time does increase to 6.1 seconds and the starting price is $50,400. The premium trim comes in at $47,600 and increases the max range to 300 miles and the 0 to 60 time drops to 4.8 seconds. The top trim is the GT, it has a starting price of $59,900, 270 miles of range, and 0 to 60 can go as low as 3.5 seconds when you add the additional GT performance package for $5,000. It's worth noting that the trade-off is between range and quickness. If you want more range, opt for rear-wheel drive, and if you want to surprise a few sports cars, opt for all-wheel drive. Ford offers both a standard range battery and an extended range battery depending on the trim you choose. However, our vehicle is the limited first edition model, which is a Mach-E launch special. For $61,000, this first edition has the extended range battery and some aesthetic upgrades to the interior as well as the exterior. Power output is 346 horsepower and max range is 270 miles. It also includes first edition badges and red brake calipers. All first edition trims were quickly spoken for by the end of 2019, but the closest example of what the first edition offers currently in the lineup would be the platinum trim equipped with the extended range battery and all wheel drive. Ford has gone to great lengths with the Mach-E's design to make it instantly recognizable as a member of the Mustang family. Of course, there is a large Mustang emblem front and center but the headlights and taillights also resemble those of what you might find on a gas-powered Mustang. The front fascia also resembles the grille found on high-performance Mustangs with its large multi-point design. The body has a strong fastback design, accented by a roofline that uses offsetting colors to give the crossover a strong coupe-like profile without sacrificing interior headroom for rear passengers. The wheels are 19 inches and wrapped in Michelin rubber. In order to keep the profile sleek, Ford did away with traditional door handles that have been replaced with buttons on the sill. When you press the button, the door pops open and is held in place by a kickstand that ensures you don't accidentally smash your fingers. The front door has a small knob that can be used to pull the door open, and the rear door has padding on the inside for you to pull the door open. Getting into the Mach-E can be done using an app on your phone or by using the key. Ford also allows you to use the keyless entry keypad. I did find that the keyless entry system wasn't always willing to unlock the doors on more than one occasion. I had to use the key fob to get the door to unlock. Perhaps this is some electronic issue that Ford is still working out. Overall, the Mach-E is a very good looking crossover 
and in the scrabber blue paint and received plenty of attention everywhere I went. There was plenty of finger pointing, staring, and even requests for pictures. All right, hopping into the 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E, and I have to say the Ford has done a nice job with this interior. Pretty much everywhere that you touch is covered in soft touch materials, and the build quality is good. Now, it's not as good as what you'll find in a lot of Japanese cars as well as European vehicles, but I'm gonna go ahead and say this, and people can get mad if they want, it's still better than what you'll find in a Tesla. I personally believe that Tesla's build quality in their interior isn't that good. Now, with that being said, this interior is certainly miles ahead. There's no squeaking and cracking. Everything seems to be pretty well put together. The interior of the Mach-E is quite good. It does follow in the trend of more seasoned EVs like Tesla and that it aims to be minimalist in its design. The standout feature of the Mach-E is the large 15 and a half inch vertical touchscreen on the center of the dash. It does remind me of the touchscreens that you'll find in the older Model S and Model X Teslas. It's worth noting that Tesla has changed their screen orientation to horizontal, and I think I do prefer horizontal screens over vertical ones. With that being said, the layout and the menus of the Mach-E screen is still very good. There are some bugs in the system, such as difficulties with the wireless Apple CarPlay, I found at times it didn't want to connect and I had to disconnect everything and then reconnect to get it to work. But once Ford figures out all these bugs, using the interface is quite simple and straightforward. Like most cars nowadays, there are different drive modes that can be accessed by pressing the Mustang button at the top of the screen. The modes include Whisper, Engage, and Unbridled. Each mode changes how aggressively the Mach-E accelerates, the steering weighting, and what Ford calls propulsion sound. Changing the drive modes also changes the graphics on the 10.2-inch instrument cluster. The instrument cluster is a nice addition and provides clear and useful information within the driver's view. As you accelerate, there's also a graphic that adds a bit of visual excitement to the drive. The materials aren't exactly what I would call luxurious, but the fit and finish are good. I like the addition of the traditional buttons and knobs, most of what you will touch is soft touch materials, and the sound bar trimmed in fabric that stretches the entire dash is a nice attention to detail. The seats in this first edition trim are wrapped in Ford's ActiveX synthetic material with grabber blue stitching and perforation. The seats, along with the steering wheel, are heated. The rear seats are comfortable and easily seat to adults with room for three passengers. There are climate control vents, USB charging ports, and cup holders in the center armrest. Open the power lifting tailgate and you will find room for 29.7 cubic feet of cargo space. Under the floorboard is additional room for storage, along with a flat tire kit and charging cables. Up front, there is more room for storage in the front, but it's somewhat annoying that Ford doesn't allow you to open it using the key. You have to use the latch inside the car in order to open it. Honestly, it's a bit more than a minor inconvenience. Once opened, you will notice there is a decent amount of space and Ford provides a cargo divider which can be removed with a bit of work. There's also a drain hole if you want to fill up the frunk with ice to keep drinks cold for tailgating or camping. Other interior features include mood lighting that can be changed to a number of different colors and a large glass roof. It gives the interior an airy feeling, especially in the rear. However, on very hot days, I found myself wishing there was a way to black out the roof even more. Although there is a good amount of tint and UV protection, it still let in more sun than I liked. Overall, the Mach-E offers a lot in the way of storage, features, and comfort, and is well worth the asking price. I personally found the Mach-E more comfortable to be in than the Tesla Model Y, although I think the Model Y still has a sense of being something special. The Mach-E's interior will feel very familiar to anyone getting into it, even if you haven't been in an electric vehicle before. 
But the real question is, having the Mustang name, how is the Mach-E on the road? And I can honestly say the Mach-E is fun to drive. It's very well balanced and its steering is direct and well weighted. For such a large vehicle, it stays fairly flat through turns thanks to its low center of gravity. Although this is technically a crossover SUV, the Mach-E sits fairly low to the ground. The battery has 88 kilowatt hours of usable space and powers two motors that combine to make 346 horsepower and 428 pound-feet of torque. That's enough to move the Mustang to 60 miles per hour and 4.8 seconds. That's just as quick as a long-range Model Y and the instant torque and acceleration can become addicting. Sometimes it's fun to smash the throttle simply to feel the instant thrust. In terms of charging, I used an EV Go station and it can be a bit frustrating because I had to download an app and set up a profile that included my credit card number and personal details the first time I used it, which did take a bit of time. With the charging infrastructure still being fairly new, there wasn't any consistency in terms of charging times or payment methods from location to location. Once I got going, getting up to 80% charge from about 60% took roughly 20 minutes. A bit quicker than was estimated, but a bit longer than expected for only 20% extra capacity. That's because although the station was marked as a fast charger, it was only a 50 kilowatt charger, well below the Mach-E's 150 kilowatt max. There was no way to see exactly how fast a vehicle was being charged that I could find although it's likely Ford could change this with an over-the-air update in the future. Even though this first edition is rated at 270 miles of range, I was on target to hit just over 200 miles of range, which isn't bad considering I was accelerating rather quickly any chance I got. Again, the instant torque can become quite addicting. With more reserved driving and with the right road conditions, 270 miles of range should certainly be possible. Throughout my time with the Mustang Mach-E, I came to truly appreciate it. It's a strong competitor at the $50,000 price range for EV crossovers, a segment that is quickly growing. The styling is aggressive and appealing, and you get all the things you would expect from an EV from a brand that has defined the automotive industry for well over a century. If I were in the market for an EV crossover, I certainly wouldn't hesitate giving the Mustang Mach-E a long and serious look. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. You can also find us on Instagram at RideXDrive.